plasma blasts and explosions rocked the battlefield as Pandronian soldiers fell in droves, their screams of agony piercing the smoke-choked air. Prince Zyrex crouched behind the twisted wreckage of a hover tank, his face grim, his once pristine armor now scorched and dented. The ruthless Andromedan ambush had devastated his elite unit, pinning them down in a kill zone with no escape. On a ridge overlooking the carnage, Pandronian generals watched the slaughter through macro binoculars, their expressions hardening with each soldier lost. A cluster of human officers from the Earth Expeditionary Force stood nearby, tense and ready for action. As a particularly ferocious barrage tore into the Pandronian lines, incinerating a dozen soldiers where they fought, Commander Daniel Ramos stepped forward. My team can get Prince Zyrex out, Ramos declared, his voice steady with resolve. We'll cut through the Helian swamps and hit the Andromedans from behind. The Pandronian generals scoffed. To them, humans were a primitive nuisance, barely worth acknowledging. General Traxus waved a dismissive hand. The swamps are a death trap. Your rescue will only add human corpses to the piles littering this world. Ramos met Traxus's condescending glare with steely determination. He thought of how long humanity had been relegated to the dregs of galactic society, of the disrespect and derision heaped upon his people by superior races. This was their chance to prove human courage and capability. We're going, with or without your blessing, Ramos stated firmly. We'll bring Prince Zyrex back. His eyes flashed. Or we'll die trying. Those are the only outcomes. No one else dared to step up, but the humans did. Shouldering their weapons, Ramos and his squad plunged down the ridge, determined to alter the course of history through glorious victory or defiant sacrifice. The swamps awaited, hungry to swallow them whole. The fetid stench of decay hung heavy in the humid air as Commander Ramos led his squad into the nightmarish depths of the Helian swamps. Gnarled trees clawed at them with jagged branches, while oily black water sucked at their boots, threatening to drag them under with each sloshing step. Strange chittering echoed from the gloom, the hungry sounds of Helix the six deadly predators. Steady, people, Ramos called over the squad's comm channel. Check those scanner sweeps. I want full-spectrum coverage on our approach. Movement! Two o'clock! Lieutenant Jake Sullivan's shout crackled in Ramos's earpiece. Closing fast! A pack of sleek, reptilian shapes exploded from the murky water, all fang and claw. Plasma fire lit the swamp as the squad opened up, scything down the creatures in sprays of sizzling green ichor. Corporal Alex Hawkins knelt beside a thrashing beast, jamming his med scanner into its heaving flank. Venom sacs and cranial venom glands, extremely toxic. One bite and you're toast. He swiftly applied a patch to a jagged gash on Private Jensen's arm, where a claw had torn through her shield weave. Ramos scowled. The planet itself was as much an enemy as the Andromedans, but no hostile environment would stop them from reaching Prince Zyrex. Reload and recover, Ramos ordered. We push forward in two. As Lieutenant Sullivan and Sergeant Kovach took up overwatch positions, Ramos checked his mission clock, calculating distances and timelines. They had to reach the prince before the Andromedans overwhelmed his position. Failure was not an option. Kilometer by blood-soaked kilometer, the humans battled through the ravenous swamps, never faltering in the face of the horrors thrown at them. Razor-toothed amphibians, choking vines that dragged men screaming into bubbling quagmires, clouds of flesh-eating insects. They overcame them all with grit, firepower, and desperate field surgery by Corporal Hawkins. Each obstacle only hardened their drive to complete the mission. No one would say the Helian crossing was easy, but they would say in awed whispers that humans did what no other race dared attempt, and in doing so, they rewrote the shape of history. Plasma blasts and dying screams heralded the squad's emergence on the Andromedan's flank. Prince Zyrex, his armor scorched and rent, stared in disbelief as the bedraggled, blood-smeared humans attacked like vengeful wraiths. Commander Ramos blasted a path to the beleaguered prince, his aim sure and lethal. Prince Zyrex, Ramos called over the maelstrom. We're your ticket out of this hellhole. On your feet, we're leaving. 
The prince stood frozen for a half second, astonished by the turn of events. Humans, the primitives dismissed by all. Yet here they were, saving a Pandronian prince from certain death. He clasped Ramos's extended hand, allowing himself to be hauled up. I, I did not think this possible. Ramos flashed a fierce grin, his eyes alight with battle joy. That's the thing about humans, Prince. We specialize in the impossible. With Lieutenant Sullivan spearheading a ferocious rearguard action and Corporal Hawkins patching up the injured, the unlikely allies fought their way to the extraction point, battered, bloody, but unbroken, the stuff of legends in the making. And on the command ship far above, an emperor began to ponder the unthinkable, that perhaps humanity was not as primitive and worthless as the galaxy believed. Perhaps in these bold, resilient warriors, the Pandronians had found the key to a new future, a future where humans and Pandronians stood tall together, ready to face any challenge the stars could throw at them. The battle was over. But the real war, the war for respect, for a new galactic order, was just beginning, and Commander Ramos and Prince Zyrex would be at the forefront, an alliance forged in blood and fire, ready to take on the universe itself. The acrid stench of sulfur and ash filled Commander Ramos's nostrils as he surveyed the desolate landscape of Infernus. Rivers of molten rock snaked between jagged obsidian spires, casting an eerie orange glow across the barren plains. In the distance, the Andromedan refinery loomed like a malevolent fortress, its reinforced walls seemingly impervious to conventional assault. Quite the death trap they've given us, Lieutenant Sullivan muttered, his eyes scanning the terrain through high-powered binoculars. Those magma fields are going to be a nightmare to cross. Ramos nodded grimly. General Carrick thinks he's handing us a suicide mission. Let's show him what humans can do when backed into a corner. The squad huddled around a holographic map, their faces illuminated by its flickering blue light. Corporal Hawkins pointed to a network of fissures running beneath the refinery. If we can trigger an eruption here, he said, indicating a weak point in the volcanic structure. The whole facility will go up in flames. And us with it, if we're not careful, Private Jensen added, her voice tight with tension. Ramos studied the map, his mind racing through potential scenarios. It's risky, but it's our best shot. Sullivan, you'll lead the infiltration team. Hawkins, prep the demo charges. Jensen, you're on Overwatch. As the squad geared up, Prince Zyrex approached, his royal armor gleaming despite the ash-filled air. Commander, I've received word that General Carex expects your failure. He does not believe humans capable of such a feat. Ramos met the prince's gaze, a hint of steel in his eyes. Then we'll just have to prove him wrong, won't we? The human squad moved out, their adaptive camouflage blending seamlessly with the volcanic terrain. They navigated treacherous lava flows and toxic gas vents their path lit by the pulsing glow of magma beneath their feet. Sullivan's voice crackled over the comm. Contact ahead, Andromedan patrol, three o'clock. Ramos signaled for the squad to take cover behind a cluster of obsidian formations. They watched as the alien soldiers passed by, their Huan Xing Hu Xi Qi glowing faintly in the sulfurous haze. Once clear, the humans pressed on, finally reaching the base of the refinery. Sullivan worked quickly to bypass the security systems, while Hawkins planted the charges at key structural points. Suddenly, alarms blared across the facility. We've been made, Jensen shouted from her sniper perch. Multiple hostiles converging on your position. Plasma fire erupted around them as Andromedan forces poured out of the refinery. Sullivan took a direct hit to his leg, crying out in pain as he collapsed. Hawkins, finish those charges. Ramos ordered, laying down covering fire. Jensen, get Sullivan out of here. The air filled with the staccato of gunfire and the sizzle of plasma bolts. Hawkins worked frantically, his hands steady despite the chaos around him. Charge is set. We need to move now. Ramos scooped up the injured Sullivan, adrenaline surging through his veins. Fall back to the extraction point. They ran, plasma blasts nipping at their heels. The ground beneath them trembled as the charges detonated, triggering a chain reaction in the volcano. Lava burst from fissures, 
engulfing the refinery and the pursuing Andromedans. A Pandronian dropship swooped in low, hovering just above the rapidly disintegrating ground. The humans leapt aboard, Sullivan's unconscious form cradled in Ramos's arms. As they soared away from the inferno, Hawkins tended to Sullivan's wounds. The lieutenant's face was ashen, his breathing labored. He's in bad shape, Hawkins reported grimly. We need to get him to a medical bay, fast. Ramos nodded, his eyes fixed on the fiery destruction below. The impossible mission was complete, but at what cost? As the dropship rocketed towards the stars, he couldn't shake the feeling that this was only the beginning of a much larger shift in the war and in humanity's place in the galaxy. The acrid smell of burning fuel and melted metal filled the air as Commander Ramos and his team touched down on the Pandronian command ship. Prince Zyrex strode towards them, his eyes gleaming with newfound respect. Commander, your actions on Infernus were uh, extraordinary, the prince said. I've spoken with Emperor Aldric. We're forming an elite joint strike team under my command, and I want you and your squad at its core. Ramos nodded, a mix of pride and wariness in his expression. We're honored, your highness. What's the mission? The Andromedan shipyards over Chalcidica, Zyrex replied, bringing up a holographic display. We need to cripple their warship production capabilities. The human squad gathered around the shimmering image, studying the heavily fortified facility. Lieutenant Sullivan, his legs still healing, leaned in with keen interest. Those defenses look nasty, he muttered. How are we getting past them? Prince Zyrex's mandibles clicked in what Ramos had come to recognize as a smile. That's where your human ingenuity comes in. We're initiating a high-altitude insertion behind enemy lines. Hours later, as their dropship plummeted through Chalcidica's upper atmosphere, Ramos felt the familiar surge of adrenaline. His team was strapped into their drop harnesses, faces set with unyielding commitment. Remember, Hawkins, Ramos called over the roar of re-entry. Those sensor towers are our primary targets. Take them down fast and clean. Corporal Hawkins patted his rifle. Consider it done, sir. The bay doors opened, revealing a sea of roiling clouds below. Without hesitation, the human soldiers leapt into the void. They plummeted through layers of atmosphere, their adaptive camouflage shimmering to match the surroundings. As they neared the ground, Hawkins took aim. His enhanced targeting systems compensated for wind shear and gravity. Three precise shots rang out, and three Andromedan sensor towers went dark. Bullseye, Hawkins whispered as he deployed his chute. The team landed in a desolate wasteland, the ground scarred by industrial runoff and radiation. Ramos's Geiger counter crackled ominously. This place is hot, Private Jensen said, her voice tight. Our rad meds won't last long here. Ramos scanned the horizon, spotting the distant silhouette of the shipyards. Then we better move fast. Sullivan, any bright ideas for crossing this mess? The lieutenant was already rummaging through debris scattered across the barren landscape. Give me ten minutes. I think I can rig up some crude rad shields. True to his word, Sullivan cobbled together makeshift radiation deflectors using scrap metal and salvaged power cells. Prince Zyrex watched with fascination as the humans donned their jury-rigged protection. Ingenious, the Pandronian royal murmured. Perhaps there is more to learn from your species than I first believed. They set off across the irradiated wastes, the improvised shields humming softly. As they approached the shipyards, massive starships loomed overhead, their half-finished hulls glinting in the harsh light. Ramos studied the facility's layout, his mind racing. The antimatter reactor core, he said suddenly. If we can trigger an overload there, this whole place goes up in smoke. Prince Zyrex's eyes widened. A bold strategy, Commander. But how do you propose we reach it? Ramos grinned, the expression fierce and determined. The same way we always do, Your Highness. We improvise. As Pandronian forces launched a diversionary assault on the shipyard's main gates, Ramos led his team through a maintenance access tunnel. They encountered their first real resistance at the reactor chamber entrance. Sullivan, work your magic, Ramos ordered as plasma fire erupted around them. The lieutenant's fingers flew over his hacking device, 
interfacing with alien systems. Sweat beaded on his brow as he raced against time and enemy reinforcements. I'm in, Sullivan shouted as the massive doors began to slide open. They charged into the reactor chamber, Prince Zyrex at their side. Elite Andromedan guards swarmed towards them, energy weapons blazing. Hawkins, Jensen, lay down suppressing fire, Ramos bellowed. Sullivan, start the overload sequence. The humans fought with desperate intensity, their close quarters combat training proving brutally effective against the towering Andromedans. Ramos himself grappled with an enemy soldier, using leverage and speed to overcome his opponent's superior strength. As alarms blared and the reactor core pulsed with growing instability, Ramos knew they had to move. Sullivan, hit those coolant systems. We need an exit. A cascade of liquid nitrogen erupted from ruptured pipes, instantly freezing the pursuing Andromedan forces. The human squad and Prince Zyrex sprinted through the chaos, leaping over frozen adversaries as the shipyard began to tear itself apart. They emerged into blinding daylight just as the first massive explosion rocked the facility. Gouts of antimatter-fueled fire reached for the sky as they raced towards the extraction point. Aboard the Pendronian evacuation ship, Ramos watched the shipyards collapse in on themselves, a miniature sun blooming where the reactor had been. He turned to find Prince Zyrex staring at him, an unreadable expression on the alien's face. Your people continue to surprise me, Commander, the prince said softly. I believe the galaxy will never be the same. As they soared away from the devastation, Ramos couldn't shake the feeling that their greatest challenges still lay ahead. The success on Chalcidica had changed everything, and he knew that not everyone would welcome humanity's rising star. The Axios Ascendant's Grand Hall glittered with the metallic sheen of Pandronian formal armor and the crisp lines of human dress uniforms. Commander Ramos stood at attention beside Prince Zyrex as Emperor Aldric addressed the assembled dignitaries. Today we celebrate a new era of cooperation, the Emperor intoned, his multifaceted eyes sweeping across the crowd. Humans and Pandronians, united in... A deafening explosion rocked the ship. Smoke billowed through shattered viewports as mind-controlled guards burst into the hall, weapons raised. Treachery, General Carex's voice boomed over the commotion. The humans seek to destroy us from within. Plasma bolts sizzled through the air. Ramos ducked, pulling Prince Zyrex down as a shot whizzed past. It's a trap, he shouted to his squad. Chaos erupted. Loyalist Pandronians clashed with the renegades, their towering forms locked in close quarters combat. Emperor Aldric's honor guard formed a protective ring around their ruler, energy shields deflecting incoming fire. Sullivan lay down suppressing fire, his rifle chattering. Commander, we're outnumbered. Ramos saw Jensen fall, a stun blast catching her in the chest. Hawkins dragged her to cover, teeth gritted. We need an exit strategy, sir. A primal roar cut through the din. Prince Zyrex charged forward, his ceremonial blade flashing as he engaged three mind-controlled guards at once. Ramos, get your people out of here. The commander hesitated, torn between duty and alliance. In that moment of indecision, a neural disruptor beam struck him from behind. The world tilted sideways as Ramos crashed to the deck, his limbs refusing to obey. Through blurring vision, he saw Prince Zyrex fall, a crimson slash across his chest. Carex's troops swarmed over the humans, binding them with energy cuffs. Take them to Axios Prime, Carex sneered, looming over Ramos's prone form. Let the Empire see these heroes for what they truly are. As consciousness faded, Ramos caught a glimpse of Hawkins slipping away through a service hatch, dedication etched on her face. Then darkness claimed him, and he knew no more. Light stabbed into Ramos's eyes as the hood was yanked from his head. He blinked, taking in the stark confines of a Pandronian prison cell. Sullivan and Jensen huddled nearby, their faces drawn and bruised. Rise and shine, Commander, a familiar voice drawled. Ramos looked up to see General Kyrex, flanked by guards. Your trial begins shortly. I do hope you're prepared to confess your crimes against the Pandronian people. Ramos met the general's gaze, his voice steady. 
The only criminal here is you, Carex. A backhanded slap sent him reeling. Insolence to the end, Carex snarled. No matter. Your lies won't save you now. As the general stormed away, Ramos turned to his squad. Status report? Sullivan winced, favoring his left side. Not great, sir, but Hawkins is still out there. If anyone can pull off a rescue, it's her. Jensen nodded grimly. We just need to hold out until... The cell block rocked with a thunderous explosion. Alarms blared as the sound of weapons fire echoed down the corridor. Speak of the devil, Sullivan grinned. The cell door disintegrated in a shower of sparks. Through the smoke strode Prince Zyrex, his armor scorched but eyes blazing. Come, my friends, your time in this accursed place is at an end. As they raced through the prison complex, Ramos marveled at the prince's purpose. Your Highness, your wounds will heal, Zyrex cut him off. There are greater concerns. Carex has seized control of the capital. We must get you off-world before... A hail of plasma fire cut off his words. Enemy reinforcements poured into the corridor, pinning them down. Go! Sullivan shouted, priming a stolen grenade. I'll buy you time! Before Ramos could protest, the lieutenant charged forward. The ensuing explosion shook the very foundations of the prison. With heavy hearts, they pressed on. An antiquated freighter waited in a long-abandoned hangar, its engines already spooling up. Hawkins? Ramos called as they sprinted up the loading ramp. The corporal's grinning face appeared in the cockpit. Miss me, sir? As the freighter rocketed away from Axios Prime, Ramos watched the world that had nearly been his tomb shrink to a distant speck. He turned to Prince Zyrex, questions burning in his eyes. What now, your highness? The Pandronian's mandibles clicked solemnly. Now, commander, we fight to reclaim our future, both human and Pandronian alike. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel. And for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.